Hi, I'm Dr. Simmons, and today I'm making dumplings. This is a family tradition that's been passed down from generation to generation. My great-grandmother used to make dumplings in this pot, which she learned how to make from her mother, which was my great-great-grandmother called Big Granny. My great-grandmother, Trudy, would make the dumplings in the pot and she lived across the street from my mom and her family when my mom was around four years old. And so when Granny Trudy would make the dumplings, then she'd have my mom come over and as a little girl learn how to make them with her. And then she'd let my mom take the pot back across the street to my grandmother um, who would serve it for dinner. And they carried on this tradition year after year, even after my mom went off to college. When she would come back home, um, Granny Trudy would make her some dumplings and bring them over in the pot as a treat. And she even continued it after my mom had gotten married. And my mom inherited the pot from her, and now my mom passed the pot on to me so that I can enjoy making this wonderful family tradition of dumplings. And the recipe starts out with some pre-sifted all-purpose flour, six cups of it, and I've already sifted it here. And to that goes in one teaspoon of baking soda, which is a base that will react with the acid of lemon to create some carbon dioxide bubbles and that will help to make the dumplings rise as a leavening agent. So I'm gonna squeeze in the lemons, and I use a little coffee filter so that it catches the seeds that come through. Now the lemon is a great source of vitamin C, which is an antioxidant that helps fight chronic diseases, which can include diabetes and heart disease and even cancer and it also really helps with immunity. It has a great smell too and citrus flavor which adds a little extra something special to the dumplings. Whoop! <laughs> Almost got the whole lemon in there. Just need the juice. So I'm starting to see some bubbles start to form and so that's the reaction where it's getting that leavening effect in there with all those little bubbles starting to form. Now the next ingredient is going to be one cup of melted butter. And butter has something called butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid that may help to decrease gut inflammation also, a little bit of fat is needed in the diet because certain vitamins called fat-soluble vitamins require the presence of fat for the body to be able to absorb them. And that includes vitamins A, D, E, and K. Now I'm going to put in two eggs. The eggs are a great source of a complete protein. And they're also a great source of vitamins and minerals. They help the dumplings to rise a little bit too, a little bit of a leavening effect. Now I'm going to add in two cups of chicken broth. So I previously made the chicken broth using some chicken drumsticks. And the chicken broth is full of collagen, which helps the skin. So that helps to improve elasticity and um, bounce in the joints. And so that might help with preventing joint stiffness. And it also helps with preventing wrinkles. And the um, chicken broth has a lot of immunoglobulin, so it's good for the immunity. Now what's nice about adding the chicken broth into the dumpling mix is that the dumpling will absorb all that good chicken broth. And then later, I'm going to cook the dumplings in chicken broth too. So they'll further 
absorb that wonderful chicken broth and all those nutrients. And so eating the dumpling will not just be like eating bread, it'll be like eating this packed full um, little nugget of goodness with all kinds of vitamins and minerals and proteins and collagen. So I'm gonna keep mixing this together and I'll come back in a little bit and show you what I do next. All right, so I mixed up the dough and now I'm going to put it onto this baking sheet. I'm just putting some flour, sifting it on so that it doesn't stick too much to the wet dough. And I've also put down a piece of parchment paper, which um, will help it to keep from sticking as well. So now I'm going to put this dough onto the baking sheet and then roll it out. And I like to use this baking sheet, not because I'm gonna put it in the oven, I'm not. I'm gonna cook it on the stove top, but it helps to get it all rolled out and then carry it from the table over to the stove top. So I'm just scooping this out and then I'm gonna roll it out with the rolling pin to try to get it as even as possible. All right, so I've got all that. Now I'm gonna sift a little bit more flour across the top and onto the rolling pin itself. Now flour itself is actually a good source of protein and a lot of the protein in flour is gluten. Um, and so there are different types of flour I use the all-purpose flour, and some flours are called hard flours and some are soft flours. So the harder the flour is, the more protein it has. The protein found in wheat is an incomplete protein, which means that it has some amino acids needed in the body, but not all of the essential ones required by the body. And that's different than the protein found in the egg, which is a complete protein, which means it has all of the essential amino acids required by the body. And those amino acids are little building blocks that the body can use to make proteins and enzymes and muscles <laughs> inside the body. So it's really important to have all those essential amino acids. If I only had in my diet sources of uh, let me put a little bit more flour because it's starting to stick. If I only had sources of incomplete protein in my diet, then I would need to pair my proteins so that I made sure that I got enough of all of the required proteins from those different sources. But that's why it's nice to have the egg because it's a complete protein so that way I know that I'm getting all of the essential amino acids. Some flowers are self-rising flowers and that means that they already have a leavening agent in them. So that's not what I'm using here because I use that baking soda and the lemon. The softer flowers that have less protein are often used more for cakes and pastries, but for dumplings, the higher protein, harder flour works really well. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna use this little spatula and that helps me to cut these into the rectangles. So I just wiggle it a little bit and that's gonna help me to cut it into long strips and then I'll come back across and cut this direction which will help to make small um, little rectangles for the dumplings. And so I'm just gonna keep working my way across and then I'm gonna take it up to the stove. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so I've been dipping these dumplings into the chicken broth as it boils and letting them swell up as they absorb all that wonderful chicken broth. So I've had some over here that have been cooking a little bit longer and they look like they're ready to go ahead and dip up. And then once I dip them up, I'll start with the next round. Oh, 
They look so good. They're gonna be delicious. They look really pretty. I'm Dr. Simmons, carrying on the tradition of living a better life.